Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Knox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? This one is called A Tidal Wave of D20s Clattering Across the Table Like Aggressive Stone Tumbleweeds. That's very descriptive. I like it. Let's see where this goes. Game night at the FLGS. We try not to judge, but you could tell right from the get-go that newbie was going to be a problem. Saunters in wearing all black and stainless steel skull ring. Slouches in his chair like he's hot crap. Makes small talk with the rest of the players, taking effort to point out that his favorite media properties are cooler than theirs. Comes prepared with ready-built character. A stock standard mysterious rogue with mysterious backstory. Bends DM's ear before game about wanting a realistic campaign. Veteran players sigh internally. What an edgelord. But the gothic or metal type. Start off in a tavern. Cliché because it works. DM describes a packed tavern on a cold winter night with snow gently falling. Inside a jovial scene that includes a roaring fire. A cheerful half-orc bartender and a human bar maid. For once, the newbie with the edgy rogue is not sitting in the corner. He is instead talking with the barmaid. You're cute, he says. She blushes and thanks him. How much, he asks. She quotes him prices for a drink and a meal. No, says newbie. I mean, how much to get you to come to my bedroom tonight? DM sighs quite externally this time. She scoffs at you and walks away towards another table. Newbie sneers at the DM. I catch her by the arm and tell her that it's no use playing and I know how to make it good for her, if that's what she's worried about. Diem says the barmaid shakes <laughs> shakes out of Newbie's grip and continues walking away. Newbie gets pissed and starts yelling at the DM that he should at least get to roll persuasion and DM's playing the barmaid all wrong. Diem tells him that the barmaid is not a prostitute, to which Newbie replies that of course she is. That's what wenches do. At this point, another player cuts into the effect that actually most taverns in the Middle Ages were family-owned businesses, meaning the waitstaff was usually the owner's relatives. Taking the cue, DM says the bartender taps Newbie's rogue on the shoulder and asks why he's getting all handsy with his daughter. Cue's screaming Newbie arguing with the rest of the table that the DM is pulling stuff out of his rump. Because how could a half-orc father a human child? The argument goes on for ten minutes. At one point, a player says, well, in real life, there are mixed-race people with lighter skin. More shockingly, there are also mixed-race people with darker skin. Which was hilarious, I think. Maybe you had to be there. Finally, Newbie has had enough and says, You know what? Screw this! I'm going to stab the bartender dead! Then take the wench and drag her off behind the bar to get some! Argument stops. Table is stunned. DM starts to ask if he's sure, but is interrupted by newbie rolling to hit, then for damage. DM leans back tiredly. After a moment, he asks the player to his left to borrow his D20s. The player hands DM a D20, and the DM asks if he can borrow another. DM goes around the table, borrowing every player's D20s, having some extra for spares, or luck, or to speed up rolls with advantage. Then he goes up to the store counter and buys more D20s, winding up with about two dozen 20 ciders in all. Nobody knows what he's up to. Finally, he sits back down behind his screen and speaks. Okay. Your attack hits and your dagger sinks into the bartender's belly. He stumbles backwards, clutching his side. The barmaid screams, which gets the attention of the other patrons. For a second, there is complete silence. Then voices. Holy crap. He just stabbed old Otto. Crap, he's gonna kill him! What? If the bartender dies, that means... No beer! No beer! No beer! All eyes turn to you as the cry goes up. Get him! Rolling initiative for the entire bar. <laughs> DM rolls. And it is a tidal wave of D20s. All of different sizes and materials clattering across the table like aggressive stone tumbleweeds, ricocheting off of each other, knocking over minis and making an odd, godly racket. Diem asks the other players what they do. They opt to sit at their tables, sipping their drinks as Newbie's rogue is dogpiled by over 20 half-drunk commoners. 
He tries to fight back, but is quickly grappled to the ground and beaten unconscious by nearly 50 fists, doing 1d4 damage each, plus one old man with a walking stick that dealt 1d6. The mob steals all the rogue's gear, including his clothes, drags his unconscious body outside, and hangs him from a tree by his ankles, upside down and naked. Oh, I should remind you, a cold winter night with snow gently falling. <laughs> Good! They also used hot pitch to write, look at his ass, on his rear end. Newbie is seething. The rest of the players are laughing their butts off. Meanwhile, the party gives the bartender medical attention, getting some free drinks for their trouble. Later on, after picking up the quest hook, they take pity on the soaking newbie and cut his rogue down, on the logic that he might be useful if there are traps. <laughs> newbie goes with them on the adventure, but he's clearly deflated. He leaves the game halfway through, making some excuse about other things to do. He never returns to the store. What a fantastic result! <laughs> I love it! The whole bar dogpiles on this freak! <laughs> this is great! I love it! That is that is fantastic! That is exactly how you should handle that situation. Oh, it's and it and it stays in game. You teach a lesson, he's humiliated, he leaves, he learns not to do that. Oh man, I don't even know why like, how can people like that honestly go out in public and try to play with strangers at a shop? I, I, just, I just don't get it. Like do they really think that stuff fly? Does that stuff fly? Like, commonly? I, I don't think so. I guess it depends on where you're at. But I, I love that ending. It was great. Our next tale is called, This is what happens when you ignore your GM's warnings. Let's jump right in. My most recent session with my group involved them going into a dungeon to stop a super weapon from firing. They didn't know how long they had, I gave them a week in game, but I impressed upon them several times that if they take too long to stop it, that there'd be consequences. It took them two days to do everything they needed to get ready. That's fine. Plenty of time left. The moment they enter the dungeon, they see the super obvious thing powering the weapon and immediately understand what they need to do to stop it, which essentially involves clearing the first floor of the dungeon. After it was done and the super weapon was stopped, then they could go after the boss on the second floor. It took them four days in-game to nearly clear the first floor, as it was quite a strain on their resources, and they had to keep going back and forth to heal and replenish certain supplies. I felt like they could have planned that better, but whatever. That's why I gave them a week. It was far more time than they actually needed. There's only one battle left, and they're going into it at full strength, so it should all turn out fine. Last day comes. I talk to the group about how the super weapon is glowing brighter today, making strange sounds they hadn't heard before. When they get back inside the dungeon, I describe how the whole structure appears under great strain, and how the main room, where the battle to stop the super weapon would take place, has completely changed color, and how the things involved in the last ritual that was powering it seemed frenzied and overzealous. Their response? Oh, that's weird! And they ignore it. Oh. They knew that all they needed to do to stop the weapon from firing was to fight that last group, then the weapon would shut down. Only afterwards would they need to travel to the second floor of the dungeon to fight the big bad. They knew this. They commented on this as they went on to the second floor. I continued to give them the most obvious signs and confirmed with them multiple times that they knew what they needed to do to stop the weapon, to the point that I began to feel I was going beyond my role and giving away too much, and they completely ignored every sign to just continue exploring the dungeon. They waste all their resources for the day on rooms on the second floor, then make their way out to rest. Next day comes. The super weapon fires. The city the PCs were trying to protect completely wiped out. The PCs themselves, less than half survived. The group was stunned. Was there anything we could have done to stop it? Gee, I wonder, face palm. <laughs> were they really that oblivious? I don't, I mean, I, I wouldn't consider that railroady, right? If there's an objective and they're supposed to get it done and they didn't do it and they knew what they needed to do and they decided to just go explore because they wanted loot or experience or whatever. I mean, just... <laughs> I guess some people are just oblivious. But an entire party, that seems a bit off. How is the entire party that clueless? Like, nobody... Nobody put the pieces together? I don't know, that seems a bit off to me. But hey, 
It's unfortunate, I mean. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible party to DM for, but... It is what it is. At least it ended quickly. <laughs> At least it would seem. Anyways, that concludes our tales for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some.